All right, I got the top stories ready to go for you right here on News Now, which is a part of FoxTenPhoenix.com. Again, everybody, my name is Pilar Arias. I'm checking the audio, making sure that everything is A-OK -okay to get going here. Good thing I checked because one of the audio levels was down. Going to start with some lighter, happier news. You know, we're getting close to a three-day weekend, Memorial Day, and some people across the country are doing whatever they can to honor veterans, right? And again, big thank you to all of you who have served or are currently serving. You have done our nation a great duty. But this first top story I have for you is about a 72-year-old who was a veteran himself walking across the country to raise awareness for vets. With each step, William Shuttleworth is a step closer to California. I'm going to average about 25 to 30 a day, which is like walking a marathon a day. The 72-year-old Newburyport man began an epic 3,000-mile cross-country journey to California on Wednesday. I probably will average 500 miles a pair of shoes, so I'll probably will go through six or seven pairs. And he's walking the entire way. What a way to see the country. Isn't it? Uh, just the best, isn't it? The U.S. Air Force veteran is on a one-man mission to raise awareness for veterans' needs. I'm particularly concerned about those that are homeless, the number of veterans that have mental health issues, and the number of veterans that every day struggle with opioid and alcohol issues. Along the six-month trek that he's dubbed Vets Don't Forget Vets. I really consider it a privilege and an honor. I'm lucky to be healthy enough to do this. Shuttleworth plans to stop and visit with veterans at places like American Legions, VFW halls, and coffee houses, like this one in Haverhill. Need another, need another coffee. Oh, for you. thanks, Sal. No but I couldn't make five blocks, and th this guy's going to do 3,000 miles. It's like, whoa, it just blew me away. He's not doing it for himself. He's not doing it to fill some void in his life. He's doing it to bring attention to a cause that needs attention brought to it. There won't be any comfy hotels for the retired superintendent. Shuttleworth is carrying his lodging on his back and plans to camp out. I got a tent. You don't sleep outside. I'm going to sleep outside every night if I have to. Shuttleworth plans on arriving at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California by Halloween. In Haverhill, Chris Flanagan, Boston 25 News. Wow. Can you all believe that? A six-month journey hopes to arrive in California by Halloween. Amazing, incredible story there. All right, well, this next top story I have for you, also relating to veterans, motorcycle vets kicking off a ride to our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. It's the start of a three-week journey from Auburn to Washington, D.C. This is our 15th year. Dozens of motorcyclists took off from the Auburn Veterans Memorial this morning for their National Veterans Awareness Ride across the country. They'll start their trip with about 40 veterans from all over the U.S., but organizers say their convoy will grow as they travel. As we cross the United States, we'll pick up more uh, motorcycles and more riders, and uh, by the time we get to Washington, D.C., we could have 150 motorcycles. And every day they'll make stops at veterans hospitals along the way to visit with and thank men and women who have served our country. A lot of these veterans are hurting. Uh, they're hurting physically and some of them are hurting emotionally. And it's very important for us to make sure that they know that they're not forgotten, they're appreciated. But they won't show up to those veterans homes empty handed. The riders have collected hundreds of cards handmade by elementary school students across the nation just like this one to hand out. They say it's a gesture that more often than not brings a tear to these veterans eyes. Their mission isn't just about expressing gratitude though, it's about educating the next generation as well. And we speak in schools on service to our community and service to our country. While they're spreading their message of positivity and kindness, many of the participants are benefiting too, riding alongside other people who understand what they've gone through. I think one of the things that the military teaches you is teamwork, partnership, and family, and this to some extent recreates that. In Auburn, Olivia de Janeiro, Fox 40 News. Do you ever hop in an Uber and just keep your fingers crossed that the driver isn't very talkative or that their music, you know, isn't too loud or not your type of music? Well, it turns out Uber is offering a new feature, you know, to stop, to kind of silence things. But there's a catch. Got that in the next top story for you. It's an answer to a problem that is decidedly first world. 
Ride-hailing giant Uber rolling out a quiet mode feature for its higher-priced cars. That is a preference that tells your driver you're simply not in the mood to talk. I think it's silly. Wouldn't even think of it. Back in the old days, this was settled with a simple comment, a human connection replaced by the click of a button. A lot of people getting the cars, they just want to be able to catch up on work or their personal items while in the car. Like They're not there to socialize or meet someone new, they're there to get home or get to where they're going. And... But it's clearly enough of an issue that Uber spent three months developing this feature. There's speculation the company deployed quiet mode ahead of their much anticipated IPO as a way to boost revenue with its priciest options. It seems like common courtesy. To see. Yeah. And I don't know, not a like an extra entitlement. Sometimes I just don't want to talk. In addition to quiet mode, Uber also allows you to request help with your luggage, a chance to choose your car temperature, and it gives you an extra 10 minutes to meet your driver. In a statement, Uber said whether it's heading to an important meeting or arriving in style for date night, we're offering an increasing number of ways for riders to personalize their experiences. Uber quiet mode is just a request because the company can't actually force your driver not to speak to you. That's due to existing employment. Law. So at some point, you may have to have a conversation with your driver and ask them to keep the chatter down. Reporting on the Upper East Side, Teresa Priolo, Fox 5 News. Oh man, what Teresa just said is Uber cannot force your driver to not talk to you. So you can request it and then I guess see what happens, right? You know what I do wish? All ride sharing options. You know, Uber, Lyft, here in Arizona, we're about to get Waymo, the driverless ride sharing. What I wish is that in every city that you can hail a ride share, they would offer a bike rack because there's been so many times where I've wanted to take my bicycle along with me. I enjoy bike riding and I just wish it was an option, a feature. Yes, I would pay more for it, right? Speaking of paying more for things, Fox Business Network's Tracy Carrasco is here to get us all caught up on some business news, including new Oreo flavors and uh, the latest in terms of robocalls. Here she is. Stocks are slowly warming up with optimism of thawing trade tensions. This after the Trump administration put off the decision on whether to add tariffs to the auto industry. Big news, the Federal Communications Commission is stepping up efforts to fight robocalls. With roughly 2,000 spam calls every second, the FCC says it will vote in June on whether to allow wireless carriers to block these calls by default. America's favorite cookie introducing five new flavors. First up is a returning campfire favorite, s'mores. Oreo Thins are getting a latte-themed twist. Plus, there is a new Baskin-Robbins ice cream flavor and a maple-flavored golden wafer. And finally, a commemorative Oreo in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. For more, log on to foxbusiness.com. In New York, I'm Tracy Carrasco. All right, I think we'll be seeing more of Tracy here in just a moment. So are you the type of person who not necessarily likes to save money, but just wants to stay home and Netflix and the comfort of your own home and maybe make some popcorn, perhaps have a drink or two? Or are you the type of person who likes to go all out goes to a movie theater, perhaps on the night a movie is released. I know Aladdin is coming out soon. I'm excited to see that real life remake and uh, I know lots of others are as well. So movie theater, full experience, could do uh, like an Alamo draft house here in the Valley where you get to eat, drink, watch a movie, or are you the type that likes to Netflix at home? The reason I'm asking is because that's what this next top story is about. Cinema operators are banking on premium experiences to get people off the couch and back into the theater. After all, home viewing options have never been better. That's why companies like Cinepolis are spending millions of dollars to renovate theaters. Now, many people look at this as big screens versus the big streamers, but the company's USA CEO and analysts say there's a Netflix fallacy that those who stream the most at home are also the most likely to go to the theater. People that like to see content will see it uh, either at home when they want to stay or at a theater. But the thing is you, you need to have a theater that has the amenities for them to have an excuse to go out of their home. The amenities include a leather recliner for every seat in the theater, as well as gourmet food and drinks brought to your seat with the touch of a button. Cinepolis may not be a household name in the U.S. yet, but it is the world's second largest theater chain by attendance, and it's expanding in the U.S. In Los Angeles, Robert Gray, 
Fox Business. <laughs> a news hour just said on the chat, no, I like to be able to control what I'm watching. That way I can go to the restroom if I need to. Hey, it makes sense, right? All right, Tracy Carrasco is back with some more business briefs right here to wrap up this top story segment on News Now, which is a part of Fox10Phoenix.com. And while I have the chance, I would like to remind you, please like, share, subscribe. Again, my name is Pilar Arias, one of two News Now hosts. Mike Pace is the other. He starts the mornings, and then I come in the afternoon. He takes on the rest of the afternoon, and then I carry you out from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Arizona time. That's right. We stream all the way until 11 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. So please, again, like, share, subscribe. Let your friends, your family, your coworkers, your neighbors, everybody you know know about us. The more, the merrier, the more everyday viewers we have chatting, get to know each other, and you all are just not right here in the U.S. You're worldwide. Again, here's Tracy Carrasco to wrap up this top story segment right here on News Now. Walmart reporting mixed first quarter results. The retailer beating profit expectations, but revenue came in light. Walmart says it's monitoring tariff discussions and is hopeful a deal can be reached. A new study from iccars.com finds older, smaller cars are the most dangerous on the road. The Mitsubishi Mirage taking the top spot, followed by the Chevy Corvette. The Honda Fit rounds out the top three. The Mirage is one of the most inexpensive cars on the market today with a starting price of $15,000. And the College Board reportedly planning to assign an adversity score to students who take the SAT to capture social and economic backgrounds. The Wall Street Journal says the new number will be calculated using 15 factors, including crime rates and poverty levels from a student's neighborhood. Only colleges will see the numbers. For more, log on to FoxBusiness.com. In New York, I'm Tracy Carrasco.